Good morning and uh, welcome to our church. Uh, we're going to sing some songs for Sabbath school as we begin our Sabbath school. But before we do so, let us bow our heads as we ask the Lord to bless us as we sing praises to his name. Let's bow together. Our oh, Father God, we thank you for the opportunity and privilege to be in your presence. And as we sing these songs to your name's honor and glory, may you bless us and may you draw us closer to you as we worship you in song, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Our first song is going to be number two. All creatures of our God and King. of our God and King, lift up your voice with us and sing, Alleluia, Alleluia, a burning sun with golden beam, and silver moon with softer Now we're going to sing number 625. 625. 625. I'm pressing on the upward way. New heights I'm gaining every day. 625. Bye. 
my faith on heaven stable land, a higher plane than I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. My heart has no desire to stay where doubts arise and fears this man. Some may dwell where these abound. My prayer, my aid is higher ground. Lord, lift me up, then I shall stand on her. Then stay. Next hymn is going to be on the screen, Holy Day Jehovah's Rest, of creation's week the best. Best of all the chosen seven, best of God to man was given. Welcome.
Good morning, North Lake Church. Good morning. Very happy Sabbath to you and a warm welcome to everyone present. I see most of the familiar faces. Is there anybody here for the first time? Nevertheless, welcome to each and every one of you. Thank you. Um, It is a beautiful day. The sun has appeared. The cold weather is behind us. We have a wonderful Sabbath program arranged for you. I'm going to ask Kenneth to come forward and to read the scripture and to give us the prayer. Good morning, church. The scripture reading is taken from Romans chapter 5, verses 1 and 2. It says, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Let us pray. Father in heaven, how grateful we are this morning to be in your presence. We thank you, Lord, for taking us here safely and giving us this opportunity in praising your name. We know, Lord, that we have not lived as we should, but we know, Lord, by your grace You have forgiven us, and we come to thank you for all that you have done for us. We ask that you bless this Sabbath school, bless other Sabbath schools like unto this, and may we worship you in spirit and in truth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Ken. You know, as we progress through time, as the difficulties arise, as fear and trepidation comes upon us, we need to remember that our God is in control. No matter what happens, no matter how distressing the current situation may be, no matter how we might be confused by the things that are happening around us, how we might be fearful for our lives, for our health, for our families, for our fortunes, let us never forget that our Lord is in control. Let us hold fast and keep the faith. I'm going to go through a couple of pointers on faith. It would be nice to read all the scriptures, but we won't really have time to do that. 
Even in my wildest dreams, I didn't think it was possible, but reality is pressing me close now. So let's just go through these points. And these are not new points for us. We're all familiar with these points. But sometimes it's good to review and to refresh so that we can gain strength from the knowledge that the Lord has given us. Romans 5.1 tells us that we're justified by faith. Ephesians 2.18 reminds us that we're saved by grace through faith. Romans 12.3 informs us that we've all received a measure of faith. And what we do with that faith is what determines not only our salvation, but our ability to perform God's will on earth. Hebrews 11.6 reminds us that we cannot please God without faith. We have a measure of faith, and we've been given the tools by which we can strengthen that faith, and that faith can lead us to be good stewards. So how do we increase our faith? Romans 10, 17 reminds us that our faith is increased by the hearing of God's word. And it's interesting that the translators should have used the word hearing rather than reading because the reality is that not everybody can read. And sometimes when we read, we're not even necessarily in a frame of mind to be able to understand. But there's something magical about hearing things because I believe it engages more of our faculties than we're aware of. The power of words are almost beyond our comprehension. But when we hear words, I think we have an added ability to understand and respond. Of course, that faith is not there simply to be a comfort to us. It's really to help us to act in ways that bring about the, thing that, the things that God wants to accomplish in our lives. Through faith, uh, Hebrews 6, 12 lets us know that uh, through faith, we inherit the promises of God. 1 John 5, 4 informs us that we can overcome the world by faith. And Isaiah 26, 3 comforts us with this thought. Through faith, God will keep us in perfect peace. So in spite of the distress and worries, in spite of the sickness, the death, the injustice, all the things that bring us concern and distress us, we need only to strengthen our faith and to remind ourselves that our God is in control. Amen. One of the things I love about this church, and I wasn't born into this church, but one of the things I love about this church is that its faith is very, very visible. Our church does marvelous things all over the world. For those of you who were here last week and um, listen to the sermon, you would, you would be, you'd be confounded to understand the extent to which our church is making a difference in the world. So let's watch the uh, Mission 360 video and see more of how our faith is reaching the nations.
How do you turn a potato into a porcupine? That's exactly what children in the country of Georgia are learning today in their English class. This is their second lesson about fruits and vegetables. They're learning the names of common vegetables as they transform them into animals and modes of transportation. Ginta, their teacher, uses interactive teaching methods to keep them engaged and even includes their parents in the action. They're studying a variety of topics ranging from numbers to colors. We just enjoy it. Even if somebody don't know something, we just uh, show the uh, like color and remind them how to, how to pronounce it correctly and we, we just enjoy it. Originally from Latvia, Ginta came to Georgia to spend a year volunteering at this Global Mission Urban Center of Influence. She started a hands-on English class for children, and she's very proud of her students' creations. Maybe I can show something? <laughs> like, yeah, you see? From one, one of the lessons when we learn about uh, animals, we made butterflies like this, and a previous lesson, Pause. <laughs> and previous lesson, when we learned something like fruits and vegetables, we made just uh, stamps for lemon and pepper, like this. <laughs> but living in a different culture can bring certain challenges and adjustments. It's very hard for me, you know. <laughs> You are from other country and they don't know, know you. They in the beginning start watching what I'm doing, how I'm doing. But now they start to be like friends for me. And today even a few said, oh, teacher, we love you. <laughs> it's very nice. And parents, uh, it's the same for them. In the beginning they was very like with dist distance. And afterwards they start to, yeah, I guess they're starting to trust. Ginta has gotten to know the students through these programs and finds it easier to share a hopeful message when a relationship has been established. Not just be a teacher, but be like friends for them. And I very hope will be a possibility to tell them more about Jesus and uh, somebody who really loves them. 15-year-old Simon has been coming to Ginta's English classes over the last few months. After many questions and conversations, Simon is eager to study the Bible and the Adventist message. I'm interested in Christ's second coming. I'm going through the Bible lessons in preparation for baptism. My life has changed. Through these programs, about 15 to 20 people in this town started Bible studies with Gotcha, a global mission pioneer, and a small group meets each Sabbath. Ginta is encouraged to share the love of Jesus with the community through English classes, despite the challenges. Please pray for Ginta as she develops friendships with students and parents in Georgia. Thank you for your continued support of global mission projects like these. I think we might just have time to be able to do the special music. Thank you. I don't know what I feel 
for our heavenly home. Um, at this point, we're going to be breaking for the adult Sabbath school classes. There is one class in the sanctuary, one in the fellowship hall. I think Buster is still doing his class um, next to the pastor's office. So at this point, we'll break. I hope you have a wonderful morning, and I hope we'll all be together for a fellowship luncheon. <laughs> 